Happy New Year. Again. Never get tired saying that, huh? Maybe. Yeah. I'm so glad to be here. Have you had a good vacation? No? Huh? Except for the colds and all that stuff, yeah. Get some snow. It snowed in Iwakuni. Ah, uh -huh, lots of snow. No pigs. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad to be here. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Um, I wasn't so sure, you know, I, I didn't discuss with Pastor Chris or Pastor Hiroshi whether I would preach or not. As I was praying, should I preach or, you know, first Sunday of the year, let the senior pastor preach or let Pastor Chris preach or I don't have a message or anything, you know. And so I'm just sitting at the table we have in our living room watching TV and eating junk Friday and I'm praying God I don't know why aren't you talking to me you know and my wife just looks over at me and says you know Pastor Hiroshi on the first service of the year always does the the animal you know the the Chinese zodiac animal you know like this is the year of the Sheep, yeah. He does the sermon on the sheep. And right when she said that, God spoke to me and said, why haven't you been listening to me, Kevin? And I said, well, wait a minute, God. I've got the Bible degree. I've been a pastor for all these years. Why are you talking to my wife instead of talking to me? God, did, God didn't listen. He just rolled his eyes again. So I knew exactly I should go read John chapter 10. And so that's how we got today's message. So th when you're done, say thank you to Midori and Pastor Hiroshi. Maybe after, I don't know about my presentation though. So. But uh, we will read John uh, in your bulletin. I think it, you might not have uh, verses 1 through 15, but that's what we're going to read today. And that's what we're going to talk about. So let's read John chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. I'll have to move this a little bit. It's, I feel like it's... You know, I'm, I talk with my hands, so. Are you ready? Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. Very word of God. I like Chris's tune in 
You know, if you would ask any child in a church this size, or even bigger church, you know, with many children around, if you could be any animal you wanted to be, what animal would you want to be? I don't think anybody would say, I want to be a sheep. They'd say, I want to be a lion, or a giraffe, or something strong, powerful. I even when I was a f first a Christian, pastor asked this in the church I was attending in North Carolina. And one little boy said, I want to be a pig. I was pretty surprised. Why in the world would you want to be a pig? He said, because I can play in the mud and I don't have to take a bath. <laughs> Mama always makes me take a bath. I don't like it. Good. Maybe I'd like to be a pig too. Yeah. No baths and nobody complained. Kevin, you smell bad. Well, nobody wants to be a sheep. You ever hear of the, you heard of the rams, but how about, you know, the Louisiana State sheep? Nobody hears about a sports team named after sheep. We hear about the Arkansas Razorbacks. You know, wild pigs, powerful. And nobody wants a team. Go sheep. But it's very funny now, right? The two most powerful college teams in America. One is a duck and the other is a butterfly. And they're kind of strange mascots this year, but this season. But sheep, you know, when you go to a circus, you see dancing elephants. You don't see dancing sheep. You see monkeys, and they're funny. But it's hard to train a sheep. They're very simple-hearted, simple-minded. They're not very teachable. They're dirty. Sheep are really dirty. Have you ever seen a sheep that's full of wool? You ever wonder how they get that clean, and then we wear it? It's really bad. They... All animals, dogs, you know, dogs will roll around on the ground and try to clean themselves. Cats will lick themselves clean. Not too clean, I think, but better than sheep doing nothing for how many months and the heavy, dirty wool hanging on them. They don't even know how to clean themselves. They're easily frightened. If the wind blows a little branch next to them, they'll jump off the edge of a cliff. And they don't learn from their mistakes. They do the same things over and over. They're defenseless. You know, they can't even bite their attackers. They don't have very sharp teeth or anything. No claws. They have hooves, but they're so round and smooth. Nothing to be afraid of at all. They don't even know how to kick. We had a sheep once called Snowy, and she was just so helpless. You know, the dogs would just bark, and she'd almost have a heart attack, you know. Totally dependent. They need guidance. They need protection. They can't do anything on their own. So, <clears throat> you think it's complimentary for Jesus to call us sheep. But it wasn't meant to be complimentary. We are sinful. We are rebellious. We're foolish. The Bible says we're like sh we all, like sheep, have gone astray. It's not saying that's a good thing. <laughs> It's bad, because you and I are on the level with a sheep. Same level. So when Jesus looked out on the people with compassion, the gospel writers said they're like sheep without a shepherd. That's a concern, because sheep are so helpless, and so are you and I, so helpless. We need a shepherd. Philip Keller was a rancher and he was a sheep rancher he took care of sheep he wrote a book <clears throat> called a shepherd looks at the 23rd Psalm and he says that sheep require more attention than any other livestock you can leave cattle pretty much to their own and they'll be okay just give them food and a place to eat they'll be all right you can leave horses somewhere. You don't have to watch them so carefully. You don't have to guide them to food and <clears throat> good pasture. They kind of, much, kind of take care of themselves. But sheep must constantly be cared for by the shepherd. Always guided, always protected. Must always be led. You know, if you leave uh, horses or cows in a certain pasture, 
they eat only enough and then they'll stop eating. They won't eat the pasture until it's barren. But sheep will eat every blade of grass if you don't lead them out of that pasture. If you don't watch them, they'll just keep eating and eating, and eating until there's nothing but dirt left. Cows, uh, horses won't do that. Even chickens probably won't do that. <laughs> sheep are nearsighted and stubborn. They have no defense. Their only defense is to run away from their predator. They can't fight back, they just run. Sounds like somebody, huh? Now, sheep have no homing instincts, you know? Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, a long time ago there were homing pigeons. A dog, a pigeon, a cat, a horse, even a, some other kinds of birds can find its way home. But a lost sheep is a lost sheep. They can't get back anywhere. Maybe just across the one or two acres over there, and they're wondering, where do I go now? You know. you know, lost sheep is a lost sheep. I think when Jesus compared us to sheep, he described us pretty well. Most people don't like change. I don't like change. This is a perfect country to live in for not liking change. We like, we like bunang. That's a good word. Bunan is no trouble, just nothing, not bothering us, right? No, as little change as possible. Bunan's good. People don't like change. We want to stay comfortable in our surroundings. Sheep like routines. Sheep are pretty good at just following the same routine. They don't like change. How about you? Look at you. I, I know where you're going to sit next Sunday. If you walk into church and somebody's sitting where you normally sit, you just go, hmm, hmm, routine. <laughs> ah, why do you do that? Because you're a sheep. <laughs> why do you want to do the same thing over and over? Because we are sheep. Ah, you want your coffee in the morning. If you don't get it, look out. Ah. Don't mess up my routine. Jesus describes us very well. We are like sheep, and like sheep we are helpless without a shepherd. We are helpless without a shepherd. In John chapter 10, Jesus calls himself our good shepherd. As we look at these verses together, I think we can find that Jesus offers us good leadership Abundant life and protection. That's what we all need. It's what we all want. Let me read again and you can follow if you want. First five verses. Very truly I tell you Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Well, just a mental picture. You know, the, we studied this in our home Bible study. And we looked at pictures. And I didn't bring any pictures. But just imagine a, a, a square, large square uh, blocked in area made of, of large stones uh, could be the size of this room and just one opening and some had partial shelters but most didn't uh, a wall maybe three feet high or you know one meter one and a half meters high and one entrance to that and there was a, a person in that area who kind of took care of it he maintained it when the sheep would go out, he'd clean it. And he's called the gatekeeper. And that's what this story is about. Now, that's a sheep pen, is where at night, the shepherd would take his sheep and lead him into this pen. Just a, a walled-in area. Sometimes partially covered, but usually not. And sometimes several flocks could fit into this area. And they would mix the sheep, and it wasn't a problem. And 
the gatekeeper would say, okay, you can use this when you're done. Let me know. I'll clean it out. I'll take care of it. And then the shepherd would, or the shepherds would go in uh, and guide their sheep into the pen. And it would protect them from thieves and robbers, wild, other wild animals that couldn't get over the cage. And when, it time, when the time came the next morning for the uh, sheep and, to go out, each shepherd would go and stand outside of the pen, the sheep pen, and he would call his own sheep. And they would come to him. They wouldn't go to the strange shepherd. They would go to their own shepherd. It was, it was pretty easy. And, you know, they wouldn't follow a stranger. And we can read about this in some of the commentaries. And uh, Philip Keller's book describes it as well. Well, what do we learn about this from verses 1 through 5? Jesus is concerned about our well-being. He knows how to and wants to take care of us as his sheep. He loves his sheep. Notice that Jesus didn't say, well, this is what he said, I'm the good shepherd. Jesus didn't say, I'm your king, right? I'm your boss. He said, I'm your shepherd. He's indicating that he's a servant. He's a caretaker. He's a watchman. He's a provider. And he calls us his sheep. All believers are his sheep. He's not lording that over us. It's a position of servanthood. We depend on God. We depend on the Holy Spirit. We depend on Jesus for everything. And like a good shepherd, Jesus is ready to provide for his children. You and I, as his sheep. Because he's the good shepherd, I can trust him to provide the leadership I need in my life. We need leaders in our life. We're, that's why he called a sheep. If you put a sheep out somewhere, they will eat the whole field and not know where to go for new food. They need somebody to lead them to the next pasture and to the next pasture, and over the rocks, and through the little creek. And you and I are called sheep because we don't know where to go. We need a leader, and that leader is Jesus Christ. It's interesting that he provides leadership for my life. Jesus doesn't prod me to go forward, or to make me go somewhere I'm not willing to go. He goes ahead of me. The scripture specifically tells us. He goes ahead of me. He leads me. He doesn't say, you do this. Go, go, go. <laughs> he doesn't say that. Some country people in here might appreciate my next story. When I was a young boy, we had an old milk cow that was really old and stubborn. And, and when we tried to milk her, she would step in the milk bucket, and she was just getting too old to be milked, you know. And there's the milk, and I have to throw it out. She stepped in it, you know. And, ah, uh, time for Bessie to go. Bessie was the name of the cow. I don't know. I don't remember. But most cows are called Bessie. But. <laughs> so we called my uncle, who had a cattle trailer. And as small kids, you know, we kind of had, oh, is this Bessie? My uncle's going to take her away and, you know, I don't know, put her out to pasture or I don't know what else. But. But she was so stubborn by this time that she didn't want to get in the trailer. It's like she knew, oh, okay, I know what you're trying to do. So it's a big trailer. And so we got two or three ropes on Bessie's horns. And my brothers were strong, you know, and I was kind of a little skinny, weak kid. But all three of us were trying, we got in the front of the trailer and we're pulling and Bessie just... She wouldn't go into the trailer. So my uncle said, oh, I'm tired of this. So he reached in the back of his truck behind the seat, and he had a long pole with two metal, uh, bare metal spots on the end of the pole, and with a battery pack on this side, and a trigger. So he said, you boys get out of the trailer and just pull from the front of the trailer, give her a little guidance. And we said, okay, because we'd never seen that machine before. So my uncle got behind Betsy, and he touched her once on the rump with that electric diode, 
and she jumped in that trailer. I mean, she flew into that trailer. He prodded her to go into that trailer. I mean, she was in that trailer. I think Betsy had, wi Betsy had wings because when he hit her with that electric prod, she jumped into the trailer. She was in there in no time, and I'm sure that she got a good shock. We, we were laughing so hard, I mean. But what does all that mean? That's not how Jesus gets us to do something. He's the shepherd. He leads us into the trailer, not the trailer. But he leads us. He goes ahead of us. He doesn't prod us with some electric pole. Do this or else. Ah, you're not going to be saved anymore if you don't listen. That's not what Jesus does. I'm going to spank you. No more blessings for you if you don't read the Bible in 90 days. <laughs> Doesn't do that. It means that he's going ahead of me. Because I can't see what's ahead of me. It's like a little sheep can't see what's ahead. They're afraid. They don't want to go ahead. They want somebody to go ahead of them. He goes ahead of me. I can trust that the Lord is leading me this way. I can trust him. He can see what's ahead. He's already there. He can see what's coming up. He knows the dangerous paths that wait for me. Just like a shepherd knows when a sheep has to go across a dangerous place. He knows how to guide them through that. It means he's leading me to good pastures. A place where my soul is going to be fed. Even if it's hard. I appreciate what Reed said. You know, we need some difficulty. Maybe the sheep need to go through some difficult passages so they can build up their muscles for the next thing that's coming. He can lead me to the places that I need to go to to build up my spiritual muscles or to avoid dangerous places. He knows what I need and he goes ahead of me. It means that I don't have to be in constant fear for my life. God. God is my shepherd. He's ahead of me. He, I belong to him. What, a, what do I need to be afraid of? He's got me in the palm of his hand. He goes ahead of me and he calls me forward. He says, come on, Michelle. Come on. It's all right. But Jesus. <laughs> come on. Michelle, I'm going to get that prod out. No, he doesn't. Sorry. She's just in my line of sight over here. So. Yeah. Also in another place in John's Gospel, she says, come on, drink. Drink. Come on, come over to this new fresh grass. Get some healthy food over here. And he says, in another place in John, I'm the bread of life. Feast on me. Eat my word. Get in the word. One verse a month is okay. Chew on that verse. It's bread of life. In Matthew he says, come. Come on, he's leading. Come. All of you are heavy, laden, burdened, down, depressed. Anybody here like that? No, everybody's okay. Jesus is calling only to you who need rest. He says that in Matthew. In our passage today, we read also that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. I really like this. And again, it goes, with, goes well with January where everybody's reading the Bible again. Right? How do we learn his voice? You know, some of our Filipino brothers live out on this small island. So I imagine at night, you can't hear anything, especially in the winter. In the summer, you can hear bugs. Night in the winter, there's no bugs, no trains, no cars. Maybe you can just hear old grandma singing, I don't know. <laughs> so quiet on the island. Maybe you need to get out somewhere and hear the voice of God. Well, you can try that. And the best way, the only way, I think, to hear the voice of God is to get into God's word. Meditate on his word. Feast on his word best way. How do we know what the voice of our shepherd is, is to follow his voice. Now, there's a, there's a story about, you know, there's a lot of sheep in New Zealand and Australia, a lot of shepherding going on down there. And there's a story about 
to ship, sheep ranchers, to shepherds, who had a dispute over one sheep. One shepherd said, this guy stole my sheep. I want it back. And they couldn't come to agreement, so they went to court. I want my sheep. This guy stole it. And the, other, the, the defendant in the case said, no, I didn't steal it. It's my sheep. The accuser said, no, it's mine. So the judge was kind of wondering what he should do. So he said, okay, bring the sheep into the courtroom. And maybe that happens in Australia. I don't know. It'd be kind of funny in America or in Japan. So what's going on? So he told the accuser, he said, okay, go out into the hallway. Leave the sheep here. Go into the hallway where, no, where the sheep can't see you and call your sheep. And he called the sheep. And the sheep made no response at all. And he called the defendant. He said, okay, your turn. Go out in the hallway. And he called the sheep just once and the sheep ran to its rightful owner. And the judge said, case dismissed. The sheep knew the voice of the shepherd. We need to follow his voice and we will enjoy the benefits. An abundant life with Jesus Christ if we just listen to his voice. Verse 7 says, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Now, why, what happened here? Is this a, a strange place in Scripture where Jesus is saying, I'm the shepherd, now I'm the gate? Which one is he? Well, he's both. Because the gate on the sheep pen was just an opening. And some people say this might not be true. They've studied the history. But there's equal arguments for the fact that a sheep pen doesn't have a gate. So um, when the... Sheep were brought into the sheep pen after a day of grazing. The shepherd would stand at the door and he'd check his sheep for illness or uh, wounds or see if they needed some care. And then they'd all go into the, the pen and he'd give water to all of them. And, you know, he'd, he'd check and make sure they were all there. And then the shepherd would not make a gate the shepherd would become the gate. The shepherd would lay down in the opening of the gate. And he became the gate. That's why Jesus is saying, I'm the gate of the sheep pen. I'm the gate for the sheep. Nobody, the shepherd would automatically be awakened if any intruder tried to come in. And the sheep, of course, would not cross over their shepherd. Well, this is basically what this means here. He says, I am the gate for the sheep. So he's saying the same thing. The shepherd is the gate for the sheep. And then in verse 8 we see all who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come. Now listen. Listen. This is a, just a wonderful verse. Favorite verse of so many people. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they, you and I, may have life and have it to the full. What a shepherd we have. Our good shepherd promises that when we follow him, we will have life to the full. Some other verse, versions say, I, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I like that abundantly lots and lots of life good life that's the new american standard and then you have to read the bible in the message someday i believe i think that's required reading i came so that so they can have real and eternal life more and better life than they ever dreamed of oh ah by a greek scholar who wrote the paraphrase, the message. One more time. I came so they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. Another says, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. The New Living Translation. Yeah, Pastor Hiroshi could give us a, a Greek in that abundantly, to the full. 
uh, exceeding some number, exceeding rank, over and over, more than is necessary, exceedingly abundantly, superior, extraordinary, surpassing. This is such an encouraging and life-changing concept, isn't it? It's not just gonna, gonna make you His. Jesus just doesn't save us and say, okay, you're saved, go for it. He doesn't do that. He says, now that I've saved you, as you follow me, I'm going to give you the best life possible. God is not interested in taking all the fun out of your life. Okay, you got saved. Now you can't have fun anymore. <laughs> I don't want to get saved. No. He is not interested in making us follow a bunch of boring rules. Everything is out of bounds now. Don't touch. Don't taste. Doesn't do that. He wants us to experience life abundantly. Have fun. Enjoy life. One of the reasons, one of the things I love about being a Christian and having a photography hobby is because I just get to see the beauty of God in that one moment. I just sit and look at photographs that I take and go, Oh God, you did this just this one instant. You're so big, God. You're so beautiful. And you give us life in all its beauty. Midori and I got a new espresso coffee machine for Christmas from my son in Tokyo. It is so cool. It makes little tiny cups of coffee. And little bit bigger cups of coffee. But it just looks cool. And you just put these little capsules in it. Push a button and bang, you got espresso coffee. What is espresso coffee? I don't know. You know. But you know, I got it out, I took it out of the box and you know, I just put it in the wall, plugged it in, put some water in, turned it on, and about five days later I read the instructions. Ah, who needs instructions, right? We do that with all these, you know, computers or video decks or H H D things, you know, we who cares what instructions? And Hiro, Pastor Hiro's is looking at me like, oh I know. Yeah, and we just plug it in, turn it on. Good enough. And then a year later somebody said, Did you know that you can do this and this and this? Oh wow. Yeah, I did that. I have a red car out here. Did you know your car can? Oh cool. It's been driving it for a year now. We don't read the instructions. We get some benefits by just plugging it in and turning it on. But if we read the instructions, we could get a full benefit of it. Right? Same thing with our life, with Christ. We just get saved and we just think, okay, I'm running now with Jesus. And we don't read the book. And we are missing so much when we don't attend Bible study. When we don't sit and meditate on God's word. When we don't read your devotions, when we don't spend time in prayer with God, because we don't know the potential of what God has for us until we spend time with the Savior. We need to spend time with the Shepherd and let Him teach us. We have to follow His voice. If we follow, if we, we don't understand his voice by reading his word and understanding and getting it here in our heart, in our heads and in our hearts, we may be in danger of following the voice of imposters and we could get hurt. God says in, the, in his word, we are to forgive those who hurt us. But we think, I don't want to follow that voice. <laughs> I like this bitterness I'm harboring here. I'll, I can live, okay, you know, I'll do this 70, 80%, but this, you know, 30, 20, 20, 30%, this is mine. I want to keep this bitterness. I want to get revenge, and you end up with ulcers and pain. You wonder why you're not healed and why God's not blessing you. And He's trying. But if we follow the voice of God in His Word, we will be set free when we forgive others. We'll be at peace. And we loose others to forgive us back. This way. Well, 
we set in motion grace and peace when we follow God's word. If we harbor things, we, God's grace and peace can't work in our lives and those around us are affected as well. Uh -huh. And there are many examples I could use. If we consistently follow God's word, I've found that I find more and better ways to apply it. I find I can share God's word with others. And, and it makes others uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. But still, there's something about sharing God's word that God will bless and, and that cycle of grace and peace because we are, we are listening to the shepherd. We are hearing that person sitting next to you on the train start a conversation with him. We are hearing that and then to respond. It's not easy. It's not comfortable. But we know it's the voice of our shepherd. And then in verse, let's go on, verse 11 uh, through 15. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man, the hire, the man runs away because he's just a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. And then Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, not like the hired hand. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Since Jesus is our good shepherd, we can depend on him to provide protection for us from our enemies. We can depend on him. Let me say it again. We can depend on him to provide protection for us. We just read the word and we heard the contrast between Jesus and the hired hand and the shepherd and the sheep. The hired hand does an okay job of caring for the sheep as long as everything's going according to plan. Let me ask you this, if you have some car problems, do you take your car to just an okay mechanic? Ah, uh, I have this, and you, you ask your friend, hey, you know a mechanic, I got these car problems, and you know, I really don't have that much money. And your friend responds, hey, I got this guy who's pretty good, I'll, sh I'll introduce you, you go, wait a minute. Or you find some spot on your arm that looks like skin cancer, and you, go to the doctor and they say, hey, I know a doctor down the road that's pretty good at healing, doing surgery. You know, he's, he's got a, a pretty good record. I'd say 51%. Pretty good. You don't want to go to that doctor, do you? The higher hand is okay. He takes care of the sheep, gives them water maybe. You know, the shepherd just walks around the corner for a few minutes. He'll watch the sheep just for that moment. But if sheep... If the wolf comes, the hired hand says, I'm out of here, because he cares more for himself than he does for the sheep. The hired hand has no direct connection with the sheep, no relationship with the sheep. He thinks of himself first and the sheep last, because he doesn't own the sheep. They're not his. He runs away and lets the wolf snatch a few and scatter the rest. But the good shepherd, Jesus, is the owner of the sheep. Jesus has a special relationship with us. A special, unique relationship with us. The hired hand doesn't have that. Jesus says to you and I today, I'm not like the hired hand. You can trust me. I'll be your shepherd. I'm willing to stand up to predators and defend you. What are the wolves you face? I think the biggest wolf we faced was, you know, I thought about something. You know, we talk about eternal life. If you give your life to Jesus Christ, you trust him, trust, trust that he rose from the dead, believe that he's the son of God, you have eternal life. But you, we don't often think about the other aspect of that, right? 
Well, what does Jesus save us from? Eternal death. We think about hell, but eternal death just sounds so frightening. But Jesus protects us from eternal death. And right here, right now, what do we still face on this earth? I think Jesus, our shepherd, can protect us from abuse. Whether it's verbal abuse at work or at home. Whether it's our own of our own doing, drug, alcohol abuse, the, great, the Good Shepherd can protect us from that. Various kinds of temptation, the Good Shepherd wants to protect us from those things as well. Addictions, different kinds. I remember discussing uh, with our pastor, who's also a, a clinical psychologist, said to me, you know, we were discussing I asked him something about addiction, one addiction versus another, and he said, addiction is addiction. And I said, whoa, oh, powerful, whoa. <laughs> yeah. But the great shepherd, the good shepherd, wants, us, wants to protect us from those addictions, wants to heal us from those things, wants to anoint our wounds and protect us and bring us out of depression and bring us out of financial error and pride and arrogance and selfishness and, and we could go down the list the Good Shepherd wants to protect us from those kinds of wolves these things all come from hell or they come from our own de bad desires and they eat us up as a wolf would eat up a sheep and the Good Shepherd doesn't want us to be eaten up when we keep our eyes on the Good Shepherd and call out to him in our fear. He hears us and he protects us. Now, sheep, I mean, uh, brothers and sisters, when you face some fear or some problem, let's not be like a sheep and just run blindly anywhere away. We need to call out to him in our fear. Read through Psalms. They're very good Psalms about encouraging Psalms as well, but uh, David was insane in Psalm 34, as Pastor Hiroshi brought out and Fernando reminded us. Insane with fear, I think. When you, your fear drives you insane, don't run like a sheep blindly off a cliff or into the arms of something besides the Good Shepherd. Run. Okay, you can run, but run to Jesus. Call out to Him in your fear, and He will hear you. He will protect you. And lastly, if we only learn to stay within the sound of His voice by listening to His Word, listening for His call, He will lead us. He will give us abundant life, far beyond anything we can arrange for ourselves. We want to do that. We want to arrange our life for ourselves. We don't want to listen to the shepherd and we get in trouble. But if we won't do that, if we'll follow him and let him arrange our life, he will protect us and guide us into good pasture. And let me close by reading three stanzas of a song that I really like. Like a shepherd, lead us. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures, feed us. For our use, thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us, thine we are. We are thine, thou dost befriend us. Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. Hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we are. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, 
grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. We will early turn to thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus. We will early turn to thee. I'm not sure I like being compared to a sheep, but I'm thankful that Jesus is my good shepherd. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you that you sent Jesus to be our shepherd. In the old way of doing things, the sheep died for the owner, for the shepherd. But in the New Testament, Jesus turned that around. And our good shepherd died for these sheep. For this sheep. And thank you for the good shepherd, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus our shepherd. Thank you, Jesus, for being our shepherd. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding us of all the goodness that our shepherd gives us and provides for us and how he protects us. Bless this thought throughout this year, the year of the sheep. Let us always be reminded of who we are. May, may we not be very wayward this year. Let us be good sheep, I pray. Fill us with your Holy Spirit daily so that we can walk in step with our shepherd. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you.